Welcome to Layer of the Alchemist, where we discuss all things heavy metal and hard rock. And welcome to another edition of Midweek Maiden. This is where we get together with you on Wednesdays to discuss all things Iron Maiden. And returning here to the layer for another uh, Midweek Maiden is Luis Mariano Rodriguez Rojas. He uh, did a video with us talking about this absolutely fascinating, very cool book that he has coming out. He gave us some rare trivia that uh, a lot of Iron Maiden fans may not know that it's stuff that's inside his book. Uh, I, I will be linking uh, in the description where you can get more information on his book. And we have him back today. I had to have him back here at the uh, Lair for Midweek Maiden because I wanted to ask him about, we're going to talk about rare early Iron Maiden recordings. In all his research, he talked about how he talked to guys all the way back to Steve Harris's first band, guys involved in uh, Maiden from the from the very beginning. So I'm very curious to hear if the, what kind of rare stuff might exist out there, what he might have heard, what he thinks might be out there. So, uh, Luis, thank, thank you for joining me here again at the Layer for Midweek Maiden. Oh, a pleasure, John. Oh, it's a pleasure to talk with you. All right. Okay. So. You 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 talk to a lot of really fascinating people in Steve Harris's early career, the early days of Iron Maiden. Through doing your research, uh, did you discover any rare recordings that that might fascinate people to know that they even exist? Yes, yes. There's actually I know about of uh, five different recordings, unofficial recordings, of course. Uh, from the band, there's actually one from the well. There's there. It has four songs from the really really early days. I'm talking when Paul Day was in the band. Uh, this is a very. I, I actually listened to this one. Uh, it has four songs. It has Jailbreak, which is a cover song. It has I've Got the Fire. It has Iron Maiden and. Uh, yeah, a strange world, wow. but it's an incomplete recording, and it's really, really sounds bad. So you can can't actually tell if it's really the the real thing or not. Some say it is. Uh, it's obvious that Iron Maiden, uh, it's the song Iron Maiden. But you cannot really say if it's, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of uh, made up tape that mm. wants to sound like. A, uh, so that's that's the that's a very interesting one. But I do know of three uh, re different recordings from 1977. There's one from 1978 and there's a couple from 1979 that are, I know they exist. And I heard it, I heard two of them, uh, for example, and this is a, a this is great because it's he, they, uh, historic value of it. It's the actual last gig, Dennis Wilcock, uh, Barry Perkins, that's Thunderstick known for people, Barry Perkins, and Dave Murray played together in Iron Maiden. Wow. This was recorded in, eight, uh, I think the, the exact date, it's April 8, 1978. So right before uh, Maiden disbanded and uh, Doug Santum came in and um, Paul Liano came in. Because this recording sounds absolutely gorgeous. Wow, and it's a live recording. Then it's it's, it's a, live. yeah, and it's the full gig. You can wow. hear all the songs. You can actually hear people say, and that made me crack because you can actually. I mean, people think that the the well because Maiden wants you to believe that that Dennis Wilcock like just um, just left the band and that was it, and that's not true. He uh, when and we can talk about this, but uh, when Dave Murray came back into Maiden, Dennis Wilcock was not happy with that decision, and he told Steve, uh, uh, no, no, man, I, I, I want to do my own thing. I, I have a different ideas. But they agreed to play three more gigs together, which were, were already booked. 
the ones April 6, April 7, and April 8. The one in April 8 was at the Bridge House, and the recording is about this one. And people already knew that Dennis was going to leave the band. It wasn't a secret. I yeah. mean, the people who were at the gig knew about this. And you can hear people between songs saying, Dennis, don't leave, like <laughs> shouting at him. Yeah, and he, wow. and he laughs about it and he jokes about it. Well, you can hear that in the recording. It's absolutely marvelous. I mean, you can't believe that actual, that actual recording exists. Has has that gotten out on like the bootleg circuit? Is it something? No. It's it's something that that that's uh, well, <laughs> funny story behind it. it. At one moment, I'm speaking like the very 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 early stages of internet, and when trading was the, the, a common thing in internet, you could actually uh, got this tape. Well, it wasn't a tape. It was uh, at that time, it was already digitalized. But you could uh, get it. Uh, then it disappeared from trading circles. And it resurfaced for a while when Dennis Wilco reappeared after all these years. Mm -hmm. I'm, I know himself uh, have given this recording to some people. Uh, but at the moment, I don't think you can easily find it. It's not 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 that easy. Yeah, I've never I've, I never even knew that that existed. What what Iron Maiden songs do they do they play in the set? What songs are already there? Uh, or are they well, all? Is it all like the first album, or you know what mix almost, of covers or? It, no, actually, it's pure uh, original material. Okay. Uh, there's Prouder, there's Another Life, there's Rash Child, of course, there's Prodigal Son, which people to this day say, no, maybe never have played Prodigal Son. There's Prodigal Son in that wow. recording. Uh, there's uh, Rash Child, Prowler, Another Life, Iron Maiden. Uh, uh, no, that's not Run Free. Mm. Yeah, this most of the material from the from the first album and some songs of the second album. Wow. Do, do you think it was professionally recorded, like the band recorded it, or do you think it was somebody in the in the audience that just had a had a tape recorder on them, or did the band? Because he said it said the sound quality of it is really good, so I'm wondering if did the band maybe even you know set something up to record it. It, it's possible that the band itself uh, recorded. I know Steve, I do know Steve has recordings from uh, when he played in Gypsy's Kiss. I know he used to record, I don't know if he if he's, has tapes from when he's playing Smiler, but I do know he, he, he used to uh, have people record shows. I do know that. So it's very, very likable that 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 one was professional recorded. Yeah, and it seems like Steve, you know, you see these things as Steve's diary where he keeps track of how much the band got paid and all this other mm -hmm. stuff. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if, like you said, he would, would have been recording a lot of the shows and, and, and keeping them somewhere. And uh, boy, would that be fascinating, like an Iron Maiden, some sort of collection or or a box set of these yeah. really, really early recordings. I mean, maybe there's some legal entanglements that might restrict them from, from doing that. But uh, like you said, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, Steve is sitting on, you know, a, a, a chest full of uh, cassettes of like the, you know, the yeah. really early uh, days of the band. So that's fascinating. Yeah, yeah me too, me too, me too. And uh, I do know that actually, uh, this is another thing. Uh, when Paul auditioned for Maiden, uh, he, he the, the actual show, well, the actual songs he had to learn for the first audition was the Bridge House recording. So mm -hmm. he had he learned uh, the melody of the song by hearing Dennis sing it at the Bridge House on April 8th. Wow. And now he learned part. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, well, no, I'll just say that's 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 fascinating. Uh, what is the earliest studio type recording 
that exists of, of Iron Maiden, not live, but then maybe out of rehearsing or in, in the studio? Do you know what's the earliest known to exist? Well, I, I am almost positive that the first one is this real to real tape that uh, Barry Perkins, Thunderstick, uh, put snips at, out on and, and YouTube. I don't know if you have seen that one. No. Well, uh, Barry Perkins, when he got into the band, actually recorded. He had, I know he has like, I, I do understand he has at least three different tapes. He, he put one in, on the internet, well, the, the cover of it and, and small snips of it that was recorded in a studio in November, 19, November, no, November 1977. Wow. Uh, and he has, that, that's, that's a studio, that's a studio recording. I don't know if it's like straight from the mix from the from the microphones of the studio, but that that's a complete rehearsal. And that's what songs what did they play there? Uh, I, there's Another Life, Our Maiden, Prowler, um, Charlotte the Harlot. That uh, that was that was actually also in the in the bridge route. Going the Charlotte the Harlot, mm, Innocent Exile. Um, Rash Child. It's I mean it's the it's the full the the full set list they will play in in the early in the early yeah. days of the band. Fascinating. So what that about, that's probably is the first one. Yeah, that that's really interesting. What about uh, so the first time Iron Maiden officially appears on vinyl? is for one of those compilations. Was it Metal for Mothers or they had Wrath yep. Child and I think one other song? Sanctuary, yeah, Wrath Child Sanctuary. and Sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And what was the lineup for that? Because wasn't that one guitar or there's something going on with the guitars on there? Yeah, there, the lineup for that one is uh, Dave Murray, Tony Parsons, Doc Sampson, uh, Poliano and Steve Harris, that's the one. Okay. Yeah, but incredibly, Tony Parsons was lucky enough to record, uh, let's say, uh, at least uh, two different things, which is, uh, of course, the, the recordings from the Metal of Four Mothers and that in the famous uh, recording for the Friday Night Rock uh, show that is in, the, in, the, uh, in one of the box sets in, which one is this? In the Eddie's archive, there's actually the, he, that show they played where where they recorded um, Iron Maiden, Sanctuary, or oh, I always forgot uh, Transylvania, and a fourth song that my mind can't mm. remember at the moment. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, from the Eddie Eddie's archive. Yeah, uh -huh. I didn't realize mm -hmm. that, that that he was on that. Yeah, um, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, does anything exist from like the Gypsy's Kiss, Smiler, any live recordings like Steve, you know, very, very early on like that? Uh, Steve has spoken about having recordings from Gypsy's Kiss. I don't know if he has full gigs. I know he has some some songs. Uh, there's actually a picture of, of it in the early days uh, documentary. Uh, where he shows that he has, yeah. I don't remember, uh, I think it was, uh, well, it was this song that, that ended up, Endless Pit, which ended up being, the, with the riff end, uh, ended being the riff that he used in Innocent Exile. Yeah. I do know he has that one. I, he could probably have, and he has says that he has, recordings from Gypsy's Kiss. So I think it's most probably that he do. All right, uh, one other question for you here with the rare stuff. It seems like Iron Maiden, once they officially get rolling with the first album and everything, they weren't really a band that went into the studio, recorded 15 songs and then just took 10 of them. 
for the record. You know, they seem to go in and pretty much, you know, record what they what they did. They had the covers that would often be the B sides of of their singles. But in other words, it doesn't seem like from the outside, it doesn't seem like there would be a lot of like or any unreleased studio stuff from Iron Maiden. Or is there? Is there any unreleased stuff from 1980 forward that the band recorded and for whatever reason never never released it? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, another person... I'm so Are you, you there? Yep, I'm here, yeah. Right. Uh, was Danny Stratton and I asked him about it and he said well once we got into the studio Steve already knew what he wanted to record I, know, I mean he, he knew and he already kind of knew the order at what he wanted to record I know it, like there's going to be fan of the opera Prowler Transylvania uh, running free remember tomorrow he already knew that so what's out there that's actually recorded in a pro studio, but mm, has never been like officially used. And I, I, I noticed that I put a, a, a special remark on officially, because we do have the, the uh, people say it's a demo, but it's not a demo. It's an actually record of running free when Clyde was, not in the band at this time, it was mm -hmm. Doc, that, that came out in the Axe, uh, Axe Attack compilation. Yeah, I've It came that. out, yeah, that, that's, that's one, that's one of those uh, rare recordings that, that was officially done. Uh, and after that, after, after that one, uh, they have like different takes from the songs, but not, not like, uh, not like extra material that ha they have fully recorded. That hasn't happened at, uh, since the first album. Right. I, it would even be interesting. I think it would be cool if they do have like some different takes or rough mixes and things like that. I would, I would find that interesting. I know that's becoming a thing now where, you know, Black Sabbath put out these box sets and they've had some alternate takes and stuff like that. So if they're sitting on any of that stuff and hey steve if you're out there listening we would we would find it interesting <laughs> yeah know, yeah put some of that well, stuff out here's a funny story that not many many fans know or may realize uh women in uniform if maiden fans remember uh when maiden recorded women in uniform was like between supporting kiss and supporting judas priest they went and recorded in, I think it was October. They recorded this cover song because Samba wanted to record the song. They want a, a, a hit, a supposed hit. And they recorded the song and the lineup in that recording was the same one from the first album. Danny Stratton, uh, Clive Burr, uh, Paul Liano, Dave Murray, and Steve Harris. But what happened? And this is, I think, yeah, this is probably the, the, it was actually, it was the first time they did this. Uh, when they came back and Adrian was already drafted for the band, I know that Adrian went and re-recorded the guitars of Women in Uniform, mm. okay? And it was like the first thing he did with the band. He went and recorded all only the guitar of the uh, of the women in uniform, and Maiden actually have released this version of the song with Adrian playing the guitar when they re-released the singles in two thousand and fourteen. Oh wow! And if you don't, if you haven't listened to to the what we call the original version, the one that came in nineteen eighty one. You probably won't notice, but if you compare that one, and you can search it in YouTube, it's it's actually, uh, I think Maiden actually uploaded the version I'm talking about in their official channel, not the video. It's the one you have to you have to search for like like the digital version of the of the song, 
in their YouTube channel. And if you pay attention, you are going to actually heard that they use a different vocal take from Paul Liano. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, it's just a, a, a small part, but it's definitely a different vocal take. So you have Adrian on guitar and a different vocal take from Paul. Fascinating. Wow. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go, everybody. There's just a little hint at some of the stuff that uh, may be out there. Maybe someday uh, some of this stuff will uh, see the light of day in some sort of official release. We can we can only hope so. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Luis for joining me here for another Midweek Maiden uh, at the Lair. Uh, make sure you look for his book. Uh, this just sounds like it's going to be absolutely fascinating with all kinds of Stephen. Even if you're a hardcore Iron Maiden fan, it sounds like there's going to be a lot of stuff uh, to learn from Luis's book. So that'll be uh, more information on that linked in the description down below. Thanks again, Luis. And uh, Pleasure, man. Pleasure. Absolutely. And I, I have a feeling you're going to be back for another Midweek Maiden or or a couple of them in the future because this is this is great stuff. <laughs> All right, and uh, for everybody out there, until we see you again, make sure you stay heavy, stay metal. Yeah.